You know, I suppose in this, in this wonderful room that if Eliza Tibbetts and Frank Miller were to step forward and up on this stage, I would have to have them go first because of, of their strong heart for our community. But today's speakers are also well known in our community and they hold the best interest of Riverside in their hearts and have for many generations in their families. He recently formed the Raincross Hospitality Corporation, which manages and operates the Riverside Convention Center, the Riverside Auditorium and Events Center, the Fox Entertainment Plaza exhibit space, as well as the Riverside Convention and Visitors Bureau, and if you heard a lot about lately, the Riverside Sports Commission. Here today to tell us how these organizations work together to enhance our economy here in Riverside through events and tourism, and they'll share a, a few news about some things that are making a splash in Riverside. Please welcome from Rain Cross Hospitality Corporation, President Ted Weglin and Senior Vice President Debbie Guthrie. It, it is really, it, it's wonderful to be here. Um, we're here to discuss um, a new side of classic California. Now before I do so, um, I want to introduce some uh, folks in the audience who really help make our group of organizations tick and perform so well for the city of Riverside. I want to introduce very briefly uh, members of the Riverside Convention and Visitors Bureau team who, who represent um, experience of over 75 years in selling and marketing the city of Riverside to meeting planners around the state and around the nation. So I'm going to quickly name them and then if you would give them a round of applause because they are very, very deserving of it. Debbie Megna, our executive director. Shaheen Rustai, sales manager, Ann Seymour, sales manager, Twin Nguyen, who is, really supports everybody and makes the office work, Cynthia Tapia, a new hire who's doing a great job for us. I don't know if Sharon Sola is here from the Auditorium and Events Center or the Muni Sharon. Sharon is here? Okay. Um, and then, of course, uh, Debbie Guthrie, who's going to be speaking right after me. And so a round of applause. They do such a great job for the city of Riverside. Now, we have a slideshow presentation, and I can't say I've ever uh, talked with a slideshow presentation behind me. I want to tell you how great Debbie Guthrie is at her job. N number one, she makes the office work. She brings in you know, business. She's got our sports commission going uh, like you can't believe. But she is so detail-oriented that she shares with me just about five minutes ago a note she passes to me. And it says, I will click the slides for you. <laughs> And then she whispers over to me and she says, I noticed this morning that one of the slides is upside down. And so I'm going to click through it really, really quickly. <laughs> now, if you know Debbie, and most of you do, within about one minute of breaking from this meeting, she's going to be on the phone with the advertising firm that we use. And she's going to share with them her thoughts on one upside down slide. So whether formally or informally, we are going to introduce to you today our new logos and our tagline for the Riverside Convention and Visitors Bureau. What it is, as you'll see to the left of the word Riverside, is a classic rain cross bell with a little new action to it. It's a classic bell. It's a new side to classic California. We think, after thinking through this for a long time, it really represents where Riverside is today, what we're doing. Yeah, we're classic, but we got some new action. We got some new vibe going on, including a couple of facilities, venues that I'm going to talk to you about. And we think it best represents where Riverside is today. Now, first, the Riverside, what we're calling Riverside Auditorium and Events Center, which is more commonly known, really, or affectionately known as the Muni. It opened in July after a $10 million remodel. It hosts banquets and weddings and quinceaneras, and it also now is hosting some concerts. Now, I am pleased to say that over the Valentine's weekend, we had our first concert at the Municipal Auditorium. It was nearly sold out, 1,560 seats out of 1,600 seats, a group called Mint Condition, and I'll tell you what was so great about it, I drove by at 7 o'clock and I saw couples out, well-dressed, in two lines around both sides of the building, waiting to get in and enjoy a Valentine's show. And they did. It, it was a great event. Um, we've had extraordinary success already with the uh, Municipal Auditorium in, in only um, seven, eight months of operating it. Already it's brought over 20,000 guests 
to downtown Riverside. And then there's the new Riverside Convention Center. Here's where you're going to see a quick click, I think. In, in a minute, you're going to see a quick click. <laughs> after, after, after 40 years, the Convention Center is being remodeled. $40 million remodel. We expect it to open in February 2014. What we like about the look of it and the feel of it outside and inside, it's got modern sustainability with classic architecture. This is an opportunity for the city of Riverside to bring new and different types of conventions to the city of Riverside to help fill up our hotel rooms and to generate a lot of foot traffic, not only downtown, but to Mag Center, to Tyler Mall, people going and spending their money at retail establishments throughout the city of Riverside. Now, one slide that's not up here, but I'm going to mention it real quickly, is the Riverside Convention and Visitors Bureau. I only, this is a sales and marketing arm for... Um, the convention center essentially. I only want to mention one thing because so many people in this room are to be thanked for it. And it's a special bring it home campaign that we have. It's a campaign that is focused on reaching out to community leaders in the city of Riverside, many of whom are sitting here, uh, who go out and they work for us and they help us bring back conventions, meetings. It, it, it could be a board meeting with an association they're affiliated with, or a regional meeting that could turn into a state convention or a national convention. And it, it's really, truly Riverside. Sixth largest city in Southern California, smallest town in America, and we leverage that. It's been very, very successful. It's, it's been so successful that we're getting phone calls from other convention and visitors bureaus now asking us, how do we pull this off? Because there are a lot of a lot of CVBs that try to do a program like this, but not many of them are successful, and we're successful because of the uniqueness of Riverside. Now, the Fox Theater. There is a new side to this classic California, classic Riverside Theater, and it's the Fox Flex Space. The Fox Flex Space, you'll see in a moment, offers about 10,000 square feet for receptions, banquets, exhibits, classrooms, it was only recently opened, but we've already got bookings through um, Rain Cross and the Convention Visitors Bureau. Set to open soon is the Black Spock Theater, small, intimate, flexible space, multiple uses, concerts, comedies, readings, speaker series. You're going to enjoy it. All you have to do is walk up there to the second level, sort of behind the Fox. There's this great patio that looks out over the Mission Inn. And there's this great little black box theater. And I'm telling you, when you go to it and you stand up there and you look out, you're going to see a new side to classic California. I guarantee it. You're going to like what you see, and, and you're going to want to go attend events there. And um, I'm actually really looking forward to it. Um, it hasn't booked any events yet because it's not open, not available to book. But when it does, I expect it will fill up pretty quickly. Now, quickly, as I lead into an introduction um, of the person who really runs the organizations, Debbie Guthrie, I want to talk about the Riverside Sports Commission. The Riverside Sports Commission was created only last September to attract major sporting events to the city of Riverside. We thought there was a vacuum in Southern California that could be filled with an organization like this. When the Riverside Aquatics Complex was built and opened a couple of years ago, we had really high expectations for it. But I'll be frank with you, and, and we were intimately involved in it, the expectations that we had for it have so far been exceeded by the numbers of groups and competitions that we've been able to bring uh, to the aquatics complex and to the city of Riverside. AYSO, when you're talking about sports, AYSO, uh, we, we have just brought in the AYSO Soccer National Championships. We brought the Arizona California All-Star Football Game. And as it relates to the Aquatic Center specifically, just listen to this. This is two years. This is how Riverside is changing. We have brought to Riverside the USA Swimming Junior Olympics, the AAU National Diving Championships, the CIF Southern Section Swimming and Dive Championships, the largest high school swim meet in the country. We've got the National Championships for Synchronized Swimming. We've got what's called eSynchro. It is the largest synchronized swimming competition in the world that will bring national teams from countries in Europe. It's generating thousands of hotel room nights and really filling up retail throughout the city of Riverside. One small story. CIF Southern Section comes in, brings thousands of kids swimming in Riverside. CPK at Riverside Plaza has its biggest day in its history. 
because of kids and families in between swim meets going down and, and spending their money. It's been a great boon for the city of Riverside. We are pleased to uh, participate with the Sports Commission and um, try to bring as many sporting events as we can. With that, um, probably the biggest event that you've at least heard about is one that's taking place at the Aquatics Complex right now. It's ABC's filming of the TV show Splash. If you haven't gotten out to see the first two episodes being taped, trust me, you want to get out and see it. It is a lot of fun. It is Hollywood right here in Riverside. ABC came out. They literally built a studio around the aquatics complex, the diving section of the aquatics complex. The person who was so involved in bringing it here, especially after they shot their initial promo, convinced them to come to Riverside that we could get it done for their filming, was Debbie Guthrie, and she's going to share with you something about Splash. So thank you for having me here today. I appreciate it. And here's Debbie. Thank you. One thing, you know, we are attracting so many sports to Riverside right now, it's great. But it really, really the impetus that got us going there was the development of the aquatics complex. And I just wanted to bring to your attention that since the complex has been opened, it's generated about three and a half million dollars of estimated economic impact here in Riverside. So this is a great thing and it's just started, really just started. And so I um, wanted to tell you, everybody's been asking me, how in the heck did we get ABC to even look at Riverside, to consider Riverside as a location for the Splash show that's coming out now? And so I just kind of wanted to give you really quick a little history. Um, it was mid-January when we were contacted by in the Riverside um, Convention and Visitors Bureau by ABC, and um, they had been told by Greg Luganis, who was here for the grand opening, that Riverside might be a great location to do the promo shot for all those ads that you're seeing on ABC now um, talking about the show. And uh, so they called our office, uh, because we're the connection there on the website, and um, asked us if we would be interested in showing them the location for consideration. So we brought them in, um, introduced them to the folks at Riverside City College, and long story short, by January 23rd, uh, Yada Levine Productions was filming the promo at the Riverside Aquatics Complex. And that was the first time that really, you know, Riverside showed what it could do. Riverside City College, under the leadership of Dr. Cynthia Azari, pulled together a team and quickly got contracts signed and, and got that moving forward. Um, city staff pulled together, helped get the film permits moved quickly through and, and virtually within three days, we had everything set up so they could just move in and get their um, commercials filmed. And um, then they were out of here at two o'clock in the morning um, after shooting for almost 24 hours. So that was a great experience, they loved staying in our hotels. The celebrities um, took over virtually the fourth floor here at the Mission Inn. Um, they had a great time. The ABC production crew stayed at the Hyatt, sold out all but one room. So um, it was, needless to say, a tremendous success. And as a result of that experience, we got a phone call um, in early February from John Holmes, who is the executive in charge of production for 90266 Productions, who had been told by one of the team members from ABC that Riverside might be a great location to consider for the actual um, shoot of the season, the first season of Splash. So he came out, took a look at the, um, at the property, and uh, I said, you know, I was kind of hoping you'd film the season here, but you need an indoor pool because I know with all the equipment and everything, you cannot possibly think that, you know, the weather is going to cooperate the entire time. So he said, oh, no, 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 we're going to build a studio over the top of a production studio over the top of the aquatics complex. So I think they passed, that was when the um, studio was in uh, construction. There were about 100, 100 uh, members of the construction team here. From February 16th to, um, to just about a week before they filmed the first um, show, which was on March 10th. So what they did was they uh, put that structure over there, threw a tent over it, raised it up, put all the um, 
the tracks in there, all the everything, all the lighting, everything. It's just unbelievable. So if you could show the picture of the tent completed, I believe it's the next slide. Oh, it's not in there? Okay. Well, you all probably saw it in the paper, but it is a huge red tent. It's really incredible. So uh, this whole time, I must tell you that Riverside City College, Dr. Azari and her team made this help this happen. Um, they had to coordinate a lot of activities. They wanted to have the least amount of impact on the students. Um, the classes, the parking, they wanted to, they had a number of challenges with logistics, scheduling, aquatics classes, and other user groups. Um, they, good thing is that they also had the opportunities for students from the media programs to become involved, and um, there was a considerable financial benefit to the college. So um, they moved through that process quickly, as we did through the film permit process quickly. And on March 10th, we had the first taping. And I'm pleased to say that um, Mara Moat from 9026 Productions drove all the way from LA today on a dark day <laughs> to be here with us. Mara, Mara is um, audience coordinator, and we have been working closely with Mara, um, as has RCC, on ticket distribution. And um, we do have tickets available. They are free. There are still six tapings left. Um, the group will be here. Um, the last taping is April 17th, and they'll be starting to dismantle the set right after that. So those tickets are available. We would love to have you come and join it. it like Ted said, it is an experience that you will not want to miss. Um, we are hoping it is the first experience of this kind in Riverside. We would love to have these production crews back. I've never met a more fun, cooperative, helpful group of people as, as the people in um, 9026 Productions. Very friendly, very nice to work with. So thank you, Mara, for your team being here and for helping us. So with that, um, just to kind of bring it all first, full circle, you can see how Riverside CVB and the Riverside Sports Commission um, work together with you as community members to um, bring conventions and meetings and exciting activities to Riverside. Um, we're reaching out beyond, way beyond our borders through the Riverside Sports Commission to bring activities like the Splash program, like um, Junior Olympics, USA Swimming Junior Olympics. We've got a couple of big announcements to make to you, but we cannot yet. We've got a couple of contracts to sign first, but um, lots of these kinds of things are coming about. We're serving as the initial point of, of contact. We're helping to coordinate meetings with parties concerned with each of these activities. And um, we just plan on continuing to do this and bringing a lot of exciting activity to Riverside in the future and helping the economy grow here like you've never seen before. So I thank you very much. Mm -hmm.